God. We thank you, Lord God, for this morning. I pray you bless this word that we're about to receive. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, your word is powerful. And we thank you, Lord God, for being on high, being on the throne. Bless and anoint and touch your word, Lord God. Let not me get in the way, Lord God, but you preach this word, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to know what we need to know, Lord God. Help us, Lord, get further in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, let's see. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to turn our Bibles over to Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. We'll look at verse 29. That's Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29. Uh, Amen. 29. That's going to be uh, Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29. It says, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? God is comparing his word to a fire. Amen. His, the fire. Amen is God's word. Why is God's word compared to fire? Because when the word of God is preached to you, amen, it is like burning coals. It is hot. It is heat. It's fire. And so when God's word comes to me, a sinner, uh, it hurts, it burns, and I don't like the way that feels. Sometimes I don't like that fire. I don't like it because it's telling me what I want to. I don't want to do. It's something that he's telling me to do that I don't want to do. Like I don't want to change my life. A lot of people don't want change. I know I didn't. When God was teaching me and stuff, I didn't want that. Why would I want to do something different after I've been used to doing all these things all my life? No, I don't want that. The title of the message is. Fire and desire. Amen? Amen? Fire and desire. That's the title of the message today. Fire and desire. I'll write that down. That'll be the title of the message. Amen? Fire has two qualities. Fire has two qualities. So when God's word is coming at you as like fire, there are two qualities coming with that. One is heat and one is light. So fire has these two things. It, it, it brings heat and it brings light. All right, you need to, uh, uh, to get warm or something, you get that fire going and then it brings heat. Fire heats your whole house up. Hey, Amen, you got a gas furnace. That gas got to uh, 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 cause that fire to burn. And that burn, burning of the fire caused heat to run all through your house. Amen. It gives you heat. Amen. And it also gives you light. If you're in a dark place, you don't know, and you just take your lighter and light it up, put it on a candle wick, and just walk on through wherever you need to go. It'll give you light. Amen. So that's what God's word brings. It brings heat and it brings light. Amen. So heat and light correspond to something. We'll start with heat. Heat corresponds to zeal. It co corresponds to passion. It corresponds to desire. Fire and desire. Now watch this. What is zeal? So you got three things there. You got zeal, you have passion, and you have desire. Zeal, what is that? Zeal is this. Here's the definition of zeal. Zeal is an eager an extremely fond interest in the pursuit of something. An eager and extremely fond interest in the pursuit of something. Amen? Amen. That's what it is. When you have zeal, you really, man, you really striving hard. Amen. People really fight hard for something that they're interested in. When you're interested in something, you, you'll fight to the death, amen, for almost something. Those people that were in, uh, caught, crashed those planes and that one, they were, had a zeal for whatever they believed in. Amen. It says here also for zeal, intolerantly devoted to a thing or cause. Intolerantly devoted to a thing or cause. They're just going to do it, man. It doesn't matter what gets in their way. They don't care. I'm going to find 
this thing. I'm going to do this. You can have a zeal for somebody you love, a, a girl that you met, or a man that you met. You have a zeal that just to make that person happy. You just want to do whatever you can so that you can get that person. Amen. Zeal. How much zeal do you have for God? You got to have that kind of zeal to search after God. We're talking about fire and desire. Amen. That's what the heat of God's word does. Amen. When you get God's word on the inside of you, amen, you'll have a zeal to go after God. Amen. When God's word penetrates your heart, you will really want to serve him, man. You really want to do whatever, man, intolerantly. Amen. Devoted to a thing or a cause. It doesn't matter. I'll just do it. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what the people say. It doesn't matter. You won't let anything get in your way. You'll just go, amen, after God. And you're searching and running after the Lord. Amen, you don't worry about what's over here and what's over there. That's why God said, don't look to the left or to the right when you come in for me. Seek after me with all your heart. Amen, and I'll be found of you. You got to search for God with everything you've got. And that's why the second one is passion. Amen. So we covered zeal, and now there's passion. Amen. This is all under the word heat. Amen. Heat brings zeal, and it brings passion. And what is passion? Passion is boundless enthusiasm. Boundless enthusiasm. Uh, enthusiasm that has no limits. Amen. Enthusiasm means strong excitement. Amen. Boundless excitement. Amen. Boundless enthusiasm. Amen. A feeling of its cause. Amen. Strong excitement of the feeling or of its cause. What do you feel when you think of God? When you think of the Lord, when you receive the word of God, the passion is how you feel about it when you get it. What do you feel? When you read it, do you get sleepy? Like, oh, man. Just, I'm getting tired. I'm about to go to bed now. I have. I've done it many times in my past. Before I really, really got excited about the word of God, man, I made me sleepy. I go straight to bed. Like somebody, the sand man put something on my head. I was just like, man, I'm done. But guess what? As soon as I get done with this, guess what? If I flip, if I flip that remote control TV on or something, no, I'll start watching that. I'll lose my sleep. I don't even sleep no more. Well, what happened? Well, is I'm not enthused. I have no passion for the Word of God. Some people just don't have a passion. What is passion also? Passion is also an inner burning. An inner burning. You got to have something on the inside of you that burns for the Word of God. That's what God's Word brings. It brings that heat. It brings that inner burning. It brings the enthusiasm. After you start reading the Word of God, if you just don't let yourself go to sleep, guess what? It'll start becoming strong inside of you that you need to read more. It will. It'll work. I promise you. That passion will come. That balance, enthusiasm. It don't matter. It won't have no limits. I got to get in the Word of God. You'll feel, man. I got to get it. I got to have a Word. I need more. And I just kept reading and reading and reading and reading and reading and reading. I was reading like a whole book a day. Some people just read like a verse a day. I read a whole book of the Bible every day. <laughs> I'd be reading, man. Read. You got to read. Now the last one uh, in uh, this one, two, three is desire. Desire. Heat brings desire. What is desire? Desire means to wish or long for. It's a want. Amen. Somebody has a greatest desire of something. When I was in prison, my greatest desire was to go home. I like to go home. Everybody's desire in prison is to go home. You have a great desire. Amen. That's what the word of God brings. It brings desire, man. When you start reading the word of God, you start running into what is called the promises of God. And you'll start seeing these promises. You're like, ooh, it's good things in the word of God. It ain't just always bad. It's good things. If you read the word of God, you'll just start seeing these promises. And you'll say, man, you'll read it and you'll say, wait a minute, these promises are made to me. God is talking to you in the word of God. You got to see what God says. 
He's got something to say. And it'll bring you desire, man. You'll have zeal. And so the word of God brings zeal. It makes you, amen, really run after what you want. It'll make you want to live for God. And then it brings passion. That balance, enthusiasm, you're just enthused. You're so happy about it. Like, I just love this stuff. And it makes you want it more and more. Amen. Then you have light. Amen. I said fire has two qualities. One is heat and when the other is light. Amen. Jesus, of course, says, I am the light of the world. Amen. I'm the light. He that follows after me shall never walk in darkness. Amen, because God's word is light. It brings light. Amen. That's what it brings. Now, what does light represent? Light represents truth. So it corresponds to truth. What is truth? Conformity. Watch this. Conformity to fact or actuality. It's when you conform to what the facts say and actuality. When you're going to conform, the fact is... You have to do these things. Now, the world is not doing those things. But the fact, which is the truth, is right here, and you have to conform to it. It's the actual fact that God's word never fails. It's never been proven wrong. Amen. And if you conform to it, you will be living in truth. Amen. So the truth also is sincerity, integrity. Reality, that's what this is. This is real. Fidelity to an original or standard. Amen. Fidelity to an original or a standard. Accuracy and honesty. I like that fidelity. Fidelity, where you keep your faithfulness to an original. The original right here, the King James Version. I like the King James Version. A lot of people go to these new versions and stuff like that. They want to read that stuff that was written by man. Man had tampered with those things. And you read that stuff and you compare it to the original stuff, the Hebrew and the Greek. You should know that the King James Version has stuck to its original. The Hebrew and the Greek. They stuck to the truth, man. These new Bibles have gotten away. They don't stick to the truth. They're not going to keep the word of God. They have removed God's name 400 some times. They removed the name of Christ hundreds of times. Just remove it. Just move his name out of the way. Mm. The word of God says, my God shall supply your needs. Amen. He said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth you. They say they remove words out of the Bible because they are too hard. To understand. So let's remove Christ's name from that piece of scripture, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ. Let's move that. That's too old. I can't understand that word. Let's call it, let's call Jesus or Christ. Let's, let's not call him Jesus either. Let's call him him. I can do all things through him, which strengthens me. Now, who is him? That could be your boyfriend. You know, from last week, that could be uh, somebody you met at the restaurant. That could be uh, the mailman. I mean, you can do all things through him. I'm like, who is that? Why couldn't you just take Christ's name if you're going to change it and just say Jesus? Everybody knows who that is. The whole Bible is about him. So why do you do that? I don't know. It's a lie versus the truth. The truth is conformity to fact or actuality. Sincerity, sincerity, integrity, reality. Right here, fidelity to an original. The original word of God, or a standard. The Bible gives us standards on what we should set for our lives. He gives you standards on what you should set for your children. Ways how you should live. Amen. And you can either do it or you don't have to. It doesn't make it the truth if you don't live it, though. It doesn't mean the word of God is not true. Well, I ain't living. So, well, maybe the word of God ain't true then. Maybe I don't have to do it either. I don't, I don't want to live like that. Well, they ain't living like that over there at the First Baptist Church. Even over here at the Pentecostal Church, they doing a lot of things, loosening up. Churches today, they getting loose. Even the apostolic churches today, loosening up now. They don't care. Just bringing anybody in the church now. Let anything happen. Just bring the world into the church. And let them sing hip-hop and all the stuff. 
and saying it's okay. You got everybody in the congregation saying, yeah, it's okay. Let's bring the world in and push God out. Making the word of God of none effect. The truth doesn't matter anymore. Amen. From heat comes truth. Amen. From heat, from the heat of the word of God comes the truth. Seek and find, the Bible says, when a person preaches what he loves, it will all flow from his mouth naturally. When a preacher preaches what he loves, it will flow out of his mouth. The zeal, the passion for it will flow out naturally. It'll be so simple for him to talk about something. And even you today, it's so easy to talk about something you know. Amen? Amen? Ain't that what I'm saying? Fire and desire is what we're talking about. Amen? We know that on a great trip to King's Island. And we can come back home, me and the kids. We'll come home and tell you all about it. Our wife, we'll tell the woman, the wife, the mother, all about it. Let me tell you about what we did. We rode Diamondback. Oh, man, we had a good time. We did this and we did that. Oh, we rolled the drop tower. Let me tell you about it. When I was at the top of that hill on drop tower, whoo, I was scared of that. And then it came on, whoo, came on down, boy, whoo, I was screaming. And the kids tell on me, tell my wife, I'm screaming. Ah, he screamed. But when it comes to talking about the word of God, can't do it. Whatever you have fire and desire for, you can talk about it. Amen. Amen. You can talk about when you're in the world, a hot date. You had a hot date that night. Woo, let me tell you, you get to the workplace that next day, tell you all about it. Oh, let me tell you. they would be like, girl, what happened? Oh, man, me and him. Oh, we had just a wonderful time. First of all, we went to the movie. He come and got me right about 7.30. After 7.30, then we went to the to have dinner. And when we had dinner, he had bought me. Let me tell you what happened. And they can tell you all about it. A good fight in prison. They can tell you all about it. When the fight happens. Everything. Let me tell you, man, I saw it. I saw it all, man. So first of all, when he came out, he was mad because he lost the chest. And so dude said, what you want to do about it? He said, what you want to do? He said, well, meet me in the laundry room. Well, he went in the laundry room. Boom, 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 boom. Everything's knocking together. And when a, a, a dryer gets hit, a body hits a dryer, you know what kind of noise that can set off? <laughs> Or a washer, man, it makes so much noise, and so you could tell all about it. And then he busts his head up against the wall. Bam! And then he got up, kicked him. Bam! And then the guy came around and punched him. But then he missed. He got done, man, then he punched him. Bam! Man, that guy flew back into the wall, hit the washing machine, man, then he grabbed You see? And when the officers come to say, anybody know what happened? They say, I don't know anything. I didn't see anything. You see? But they can tell you all about it. It's hidden in them. It's hidden in them. That truth is in them, but they're hiding it. What do you know? I don't know nothing. Why? Because they don't want to be in trouble for it. They don't want to be persecuted. And that's how a lot of people, they get the word of God and the truth is in them. But they won't, they don't know anything. I don't know anything because they'll be persecuted. The people, what I'm saying is that they can tell something about something they know. Gossip. Go to a beauty salon. Go to the hair barber shop. You hear a whole lot of gossip. Go to the place in the workplace, in the break room, at work. A whole lot of gossip. Amen. Go into the bathroom of the church, and you get a whole lot of gossip. Amen. Rap songs. The children today can tell you all about them. They know everything, every word. The beat and everything. You have one little kid over here beatboxing. Another one doing the beat, the bass line. And then you have the one guy going back and forth. And him and a couple guys next to him going back. They both doing it at the same time. Uh, 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 and they tell you all about the rap. And everything is said. I still remember a few lines myself from back in my day in the 80s. Tell you all about LL Cool J and what they say. That's the, what do you call them? Uh, uh, who, who's some of them rappers? We I, I got so far away, I don't even remember them two people. Anymore. <laughs> I don't forgot the names. Uh, man, a few people. Uh, anyway, movies. Amen. Person see a good movie can tell you all about it. My daughter was telling us about the Big Bang Theory the other day. All about it. She'll tell you everything. Soap opera. People can tell you all about the soap opera. You can teach your kids real young to do whatever. And they'll cling to 
to it. You teach him young, I said, train up a child when he is young. And when he get older, he won't depart from it. But not when he's young. He said, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he won't depart from it. You got to train them up, though, when they're young. That's what I'm saying. In the way he or she should go. It's people that teach their kids everything today. And it's true that if you teach your kids whatever you want them to do, they'll learn that stuff. Weightlifting. I know a kid that's like young, a little baby, and he got big muscles, man. He lifts weights. You look at him like, man, what does he do? He can lift more than me. And he's just a little kid. You can teach kids to dance and stuff like that. That's what they have schools, dance schools for little kids. They got a TV show now where the girls are learning, little babies, learn how to walk the runway. Little babies and wearing makeup and paint and everything all over their face. Got all kinds of hairstyles. And what they're doing, teaching them to be models, swimsuit models and things like that. They got swimsuits on, these little babies. They only be like two years old. Teaching them young. But if you tell a teacher kid how to read the Bible or sing in the choir, people mad. They get upset. Oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, don't do your child like that. Hmm. You got millionaires that homeschool their kid children. Been doing it for years. Been doing it for years, and these kids grow up to be very successful. Millionaires are smart. That's why they're millionaires. <laughs> They don't put their kids in no public school. They smart than that. They know, like, oh, no, you can't go there. Mm -mm. Now I want to teach you to be something. You ain't going around there. <laughs> and first person be like, you ain't put your kids in school? Huh? No, they're homeschooled. What? Oh, what about their social life? My kids are smarter than any kids I've ever seen in the past 25 years. Amen. Amen. I can clap for that. They're smart. Amen. They know the difference between right and wrong. Just teach them the truth. All you do is show them the word of God, God, do the rest. That's what I say. You just give them that. Here, let me show you this. Just read that right there. Now, let me read that to you. And I'll explain that to you. This is what it means. And boom, God do the rest. He said, thank you very much. I'll take you from here. And God do that. I promise you. And your kids won't be no heathens out in the streets like I was. You see? I wasn't nothing but a big old heathen doing what I wanted to do. I didn't care about what my parents told me. They ain't, they ain't know nothing about the Bible. Like, they ain't know nothing about it, you know. Nothing at all. But once I learned this Bible, then it taught me something. I said, whoa, fire and desire. Amen. You teach your kids music, modeling, all that stuff. I know little babies that can sign good because they were taught to when they were children. They might have a little gene in them, a little gift or something, but they were still taught on that level. Martial arts. I know kids that can do martial arts. Cold blood will kick your butt. Little babies. Gymnastics. Look at the Olympics. They be little babies. Especially them girls from China. They teach them real young in China. Little babies. Watch the Olympics next time. The, uh, gymnastics and stuff. Them little babies just say, is that, uh, you're not even old enough. They got in trouble one time. They said, these kids is not old enough who y'all got over here. The kids look like they was like one year old, two years old, flipping all over the place, getting oh, yeah. medals. Man, you're like, what in the world? How a little baby just came out of the womb can do two back nose and, and full twists and flip all the way down the mat without falling down? They can do it because they were taught when they were little, playing sports and things like that. They can fly planes. Little kids learn to fly planes. I'm telling you, go look. You'll find this stuff right on the dog on YouTube. Flying planes at little baby age. I couldn't find no plane. I don't know how to do that. I, guess you, I, I bet you I could learn, though. Selling dope. It's drug dealers out in the world. Teach the little kids to sell drugs. You can teach them. You can teach them how to use drugs, too. I know people, parents, they smoke with their kids. Smoke crack with their kids. Smoke weed with their kids. Shoot up heroin with their kids. They do that stuff with their kids. Taught them when they was young. People, can, I know kids can work with cars. We can keep going. Video games. Watch some of these kids. Look at some of these kids. They're junkies. Video game junkies can beat anybody in the game. They're cold-blooded. And you can preach to them the word of God. You can teach them to preach and understand God's holy word. You believe that? Amen. You can teach them that stuff. If you can teach them all this worldly stuff that's full of sin, and people will give them a round of applause, how come you couldn't preach them the word of God? Because people would be like, oh, you shouldn't do that. You're going to ruin their lives. Let them choose what they want later in life. 
Don't teach them that, man. You, you make them religious. You're brainwashing them. Absolutely. Wash their brains from this worldly filth. Get them brain, get brainwashed, your kids. <laughs> wash, wash that filth up out of their minds. That's what you do. If you keep sparking them to a certain field of study, they'll eventually catch fire. If you keep sparking them. Amen? Amen. Amen. You can teach kids truth. One thing you'll learn, the truth is either going to draw you or separate you. Amen. It's one or the other. It's either going to draw you or separate you. Amen. The truth or shut up. That's what I say. The truth or shut up. Which way you going to do it? You got to preach it like it is. Amen. Let me read you a scripture real quick. Jeremiah 48, 10. Jeremiah 48, 10. Jeremiah 48, 10, I'm going to. Jeremiah 48, verse 10. Amen. Jeremiah 48, 10 says, Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Now let's look at that scripture. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Amen. A curse is pronounced on the men of God who don't do right. Amen. The work of the Lord God has put you, amen, into a purpose or will to get something set for him. Amen. To neglect to do God's will. Amen. To neglect to do God's word. If God's word says one thing and you say, I don't believe I have to do all of that. And you do another thing. The Bible pronounces a curse on your life. Cursed be he that doeth the work or the will of God. Amen. Deceitfully. Neglect. Amen. Amen. It's carelessness in performing a duty for God. It's carelessness. Amen. When God tells you to do something and you don't do it, and it goes on to say, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword. Amen. From blood. Amen. Preaching the word of God is your sword. Amen. The Bible says that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Amen. God's word. Amen. Says, I want you to put this man to death in these times of war back here. And then some of the men of God, the children of Israelites, uh, of Israel, those Israelitish men who were in the duty of army work. Amen. Soldiers for the Lord. Sometimes they would spare men's lives. They wouldn't put them to death. Amen. They wouldn't take their sword and put it to death. Whatever the enemy had, they would bring something to the children of Israel and the men would take the gift from them and they would let them go on and live like, oh, I ain't going to kill you. Amen. The word of God tells us today that we got to put Satan to rest in our lives. You got to take the sword, which is the word of God, and you got to not let the blood be spared, but you got to let him have it. Take the sword and put away the sin in your life. Amen. You got to put the sin to death. Don't let it be spared. A lot of us today, we're sparing folks. Amen. Because we don't want to hurt people's feelings. So we spare their feelings. That's why I say either the truth or shut up. Amen. That's not your job to spare people's feelings. You don't have that authority from God. Amen. Once you start sparing folks' feelings or getting too sensitive, then you just getting in the way of God's work. That is doing God's work in a neglectful way. That's doing God's work deceitfully. Amen. You can't hold back the truth. Amen. Then you want to give somebody a back rub after you tell them what God's word said. You tell them God's word. You'll give it to them hard, pound for pound. And then you'll come back and apologize. Amen. For the preaching that you did. Like, oh, man, I'm sorry. Now you can't, don't worry, you ain't really got, oh, that's just the way I preach. No, you go on and preach the truth, and don't worry about it. Amen. A person is either going to believe it or they're not. Amen. It takes away from the work of God when you try to hold, rub somebody's back. Amen. Some folks, you just got to leave them alone. Amen. Matthew chapter 15, verse 12. Go there. Matthew chapter 15, verse 12. Let me show you. Some people, you just got to leave them alone. Amen. 
It says, then came his disciples. This is Matthew chapter 15, verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, amen, talking to Jesus, because Jesus got done preaching a message that really didn't rub the Pharisees and scribes too well. It said, then came his disciples and said unto him, knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended? After they heard him saying, amen, after they heard the saying, the thing that you preached, Jesus, that stuff you was preaching about, Lord, that stuff made them mad, man. Now, you know, that's the Pharisees, they're the religious leaders of the world. Amen. Verse 13 says, but he, Jesus, answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. Let me leave them Pharisees alone. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Amen. That ditch being hell fire itself. Amen. You got to preach the truth. You can't worry about what people thinking about you. Amen. You can't worry and cough out because so many people want to hear something different. Amen. The truth is going to change your life. Remember, the truth corresponds. Amen. To light. Light corresponds to truth. Amen. It's going to flash a light on their lives. Go to John chapter, I believe, 3. Amen. I'm going to show you something over here. John chapter 3. Look at this. Amen. It says here, verse 19, it says, and this is the condemnation. Amen. Here's how people are condemned. Amen. Here's how the condemnation sets in. It says that light has come into the world. Amen. To a man's conscience. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Amen. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. They don't want the truth. They don't want no heat. Amen. They don't want no fire and desire. Amen. They hate the light. Now they're coming to the light. They ain't going to see what the repair shop has to say about how they get they get their life together. The word of God is like a garage. It's a repair shop. You take your car to the repair shop and get it fixed. Nobody wants to go to the repair shop. They ain't got the money. Amen. ain't got the money. What's the money? Your faith. That's your money. You got to have faith. got to have belief. Okay, now they're coming to the light, lest his deeds should be what? Reproved. reproved. The word reproved here in Greek means exposed or discovered. Your deeds, your filthy, nasty way of living life will be exposed. It's going to be discovered if you come to the light. And everybody know that. That's why they don't want to come to the word of God. They don't want to fire and desire. They don't want to be exposed. They don't want God to see Amen, what they've been doing, which God already knows. Some people just don't want to see it themselves. Some people don't you some people just don't even want to look in the mirror. Some people say, I just I don't even want to know. Don't even tell me. I don't just flee. Leave me alone. Amen. Verse 21 says, But he that doeth truth, you do us right. Amen. Come into the light. You gonna go to the light, man. You gonna just go like, let's show me what I need to do. I'll just do it. That his deeds may be manifest. Manifest means clearly seen. Or known openly. Amen. That they were are wrought. They are wrought. Fashioned or formed in God. Wrought means fixed, organized, created, repaired in God. See, you got to get your works, your lifestyle, repaired, fixed by God. Let God fix you. Let God do his job with you. Amen. Our job, amen, is to preach the word of God. Amen. Sometimes you can get upset when people get upset with you for preaching the word of God. You can. You can get upset, man. I just get so mad that people wouldn't listen to me. Like, how come you're not listening to me? I'm telling you what God said. Man, how come you won't listen? And you'll get upset. But you, our job is not to be upset. Our job is just to preach what the truth is. The truth is right here. It's in the word. There's your truth. And men, if they believe the truth, they'll pass from death to life. 